Jesus made you well. I see you. I see you. Anna, you might want to un yeah, unmute yourself. Good evening and welcome to Kingdom Embassy Budapest. We have people joining us all over and we have a very special treat for you. Our mama is in the house. Mama, Donna, Dr. and D. Fun. <laughs> thank you for joining us thank you for expect, expect, accepting our invitation i know you are very very busy so you won't want to keep you long you teach as long as you want to you leave whenever you need to hop on another call no problem and we are just happy. all right i'll see you all later have a good day oh no no not that long <laughs> sure. so just joking you. just joking no. take it away take it away uh, it's good to be with you guys here today. Uh, it is two something, what, 2.13, according to my phone, in the afternoon here. And various, wherever you guys are from, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, good whatever, good day, good night. <laughs> but it's good to be with all of you here. Ah, yeah, I see the watch. <laughs> But it's good to see you guys. Good to have you guys on today. And uh, Princess Rekha, thank you for inviting me to come and share. Um, she had asked me to just simply share whatever was on my heart. And uh, all morning, I actually I woke up this morning and I had this phrase in my spirit and I couldn't get rid of it. it, this, it I just had this phrase in my spirit. So I thought, okay, I guess this must be what I'm supposed to talk about. So um, I hope this will help you guys and uh, encourage you guys. Uh, but that phrase that I woke up to was um, uh, when, the, when, when the going gets tough. Now, I don't know. Uh, I know here in the States, we have this saying, when the going gets tough, the tough get going, right? Yeah. Have you heard that that? saying before, yep. when the going gets tough, the tough get going. Well, when I woke up, the only part that was in my spirit was when the going gets tough and that was it. And it stopped. Mm -hmm. And then the Holy Spirit spoke and said, what will be your response? Yeah. So today I'm talking about when the going gets tough, what do we do? How do we handle when things get you know, less than ideal. And I, the Bible says in Joshua chapter one, um, God spoke to Joshua and said, be strong and very courageous, be strong and very courageous. And Joshua, because he remained strong, was able to take the land that Moses was not able to do, was not Joshua was, Joshua was able to fulfill the mandate that Moses was unable to fulfill because he was strong. And that's what I want to talk about today is strength, being strong. When the going gets tough or when the going gets rough, we have to remain strong. We have to be strong and courageous and not just tough, but strong. There's Tough and strong are two similar words, but they're a little bit different because you can be tough without necessarily being strong. In other words, being tough, if you're tough, that means you're able to survive. But if you're strong, you're able to thrive. If you're tough, that means uh, you can take a beating. The things can keep coming at you and you'll still stand but you can still lose the battle and be tough. But we aren't, we, won't, we aren't called to lose the battle, but to win. God said, be strong. He said he will renew our strength. He didn't say anything about being tough. He didn't say anything about just surviving and just surviving the, the, um, the, the trials and the tribulations, but we are supposed to overcome them. 
We're supposed to overcome them. We're supposed to conquer them. We're supposed to bulldoze through them. We, e we are even supposed to circumvent them. We should be able to puzzle the enemy. In other words, when the enemy puts a trap before us, if we, and I mentioned this before, if we are in tune with the Holy Spirit, he will show us these things ahead of time so that we can actually avoid the traps laid that, that, that Satan has uh, laid ahead of us. We don't have to even go through them. We can go around them. But even if we're not quite paying attention and we run into these traps, we can still come through unscathed just like the Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. They were thrown in the furnace, but the fire did not touch them. They were in it, but it didn't touch them. We are in this world. We may be in the trial. We may be in the tribulation, but it doesn't have to touch us. A thousand can fall at one side, 10,000 at our other side, but it, can, but it does not have to come near us. I like in Psalms, it says, no plague shall come near no plague can come near. No plague. Plague doesn't necessarily just mean disease or sickness. Plague can be poverty. Plague can be famine. Plague can be anything. Anything that plagues uh, humanity, plagues people, plagues this earth. The Bible says that no plague can come near us if we remain strong. Ephesians 6.10 says if we remain strong strong in the Lord. It says, finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in him. In Psalms chapter one, it talks about a tree being planted by the rivers of water. When the tree is planted by the rivers of water, in other words, when you are rooted in your source, you will never wither. You will never fade. You will never, you will never get weak but you will be constantly drawing from an everlasting source of strength and vitality. We are supposed to be strong, not just tough. Strength, strength includes toughness, but toughness doesn't necessarily include strength because the strong are the ones that overcome. The strong are the ones that win. The strong are the ones that take back territory. The tough can just maintain, but the strong advance. The tough just maintain. The tough just, they can sit there and they can take it. But the strong can take it and then give it back. And that's what we're supposed to do. Be strong and very courageous. With our strength, we need to be strong and then courageous. We have to be courageous enough to advance on the enemy and not retreat. We are never called to retreat. The Bible says anyone who puts their hand to the plow and looking back is not fit for the kingdom. Anyone put it, putting their hand to the plow, that means you set your mind to fulfill God's purposes and God's plans, but now you play, you're, you're, you're stepping back. You're pulling back. You're retreating. Why? Because maybe things aren't going as you had thought they would go, or maybe it got too hard when the, when the, when the going gets tough. What will be your response? The strong take the word and they put it, they apply it, they put it to practice and they overcome. The strong uh, storm the gates of hell, storm the kingdom of darkness and take it back. And the kingdom of darkness cannot prevail. The kingdom of darkness cannot prevail against people who remain strong in the Lord. So we have to be rooted in our source, getting that source all the time. And Isaiah, it says that he renews our strength. We can mount up on wings as eagles if we stay connected to him, if we stay connected to the source, stay rooted in where we get our strength from. Ephesians says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might, the power of his might, not our might. It's not by our strength, but it's by his strength that's at work within us. His strength that's at work in us. His strength can only work in us, work in us when we become aware. 
Philemon says we must acknowledge every good thing that is in us. Acknowledge every good thing that God has placed within us. He's placed in us his very essence. He's placed in us his very life, his very power, his very strength. We have no excuse to be odd, to be brutally honest. We have no, there is no excuse for failure. Absolutely none. There is no excuse for failure. There is no reason that we should ever fail because the Bible says love never fails. Love never fails. We are born of love. Therefore we cannot fail. So we must remind ourselves like David. Like, like it says, David did, he encouraged himself. I mean, I never met, I never read and read about anyone who went through so much mental anguish, <laughs> you know, King David, if you read Psalms, he, he went through the, he went through the gamut. He was depressed. He was terrified. He w- went through all these different feelings and emotions. But if you read Psalms, what I love about Psalms is in the beginning, David starts out with, woe is me, everybody, they're coming after me, I don't know if I'm going to make it, but then by the end of it, he's singing praises unto God, he, he's, it, he's lifting himself up, and he receives fresh strength because he acknowledges where his strength is coming from. The Bible says, look up, look unto the hills, from what, because that's where your help comes from, look up. Onto the hills, the hill, the hill, look up into Zion. Saviors shall come out of Zion. Your salvation is comes out of Zion. He has called you to be a savior in this, in this world. To save those who cannot save themselves. To save those who are lost. To save those who are sick and dying. We can't afford to be sick. <laughs> We can't afford to be broke. We can't afford to be depressed. We can't afford those things. There's not enough time for that. Like like we say here in the States, ain't nobody got time for that. (laughs) We don't have time for that. We need to we need to pick ourselves up and keep on pushing forward like an army. We are the army of God and we need to start acting like an army. Take God's orders and do them. No complaints, no whining, no, no, no um, second guessing, but just follow the word of God and see God come through for you. The Bible says, he said, prove me. I know he talks about prove me when it comes to finances, but it's prove him no matter what. He said that the words that you speak, he will back them up. The words that we speak, he will back them up. If we would be courageous, like the disciples prayed, Lord, they prayed to the father, give us boldness so that we can declare, give us boldness so that we can push through, give us boldness so that we don't see the circumstances around us. We don't see the fight that the enemy is trying to bring to us. But in other words, let's turn the tables instead of seeing the enemy bring the fight to us. Let's take the fight to him. Let's take, let's take the battle to him on his ground, taking his ground. Amen. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail. Being strong means that we prevail. We prevail. It's not just about taking the hits. It's not about just saying, oh, the enemy did this, the enemy did that, the enemy did that. And, and here I am, I'm still standing. Big deal. That's great. That's good. But we need to be advancing, not just standing. We're not, we're, an army doesn't just stand still. An army must advance. That's right. And we must advance. The Bible says that we must occupy until he returns. Occupation means taking control. We must take back what the enemy tries to steal from us. If he steals something, we take it back. We don't cry over it. We don't we don't whine over it. We don't, we don't, we're not afraid of it. We can never be afraid of losing anything because that's what happened to Job. The thing he feared the most happened upon him because he was afraid of losing everything. He lost it all. That's right. But because he remained strong in the Lord, even in spite of all of that, 
he gained back even more than what he had lost. And that's the promise that God gives to us, that no matter what the enemy takes away from us, we get back, we get back even better. So whenever something happens, maybe you lose a vehicle, you lose a house, you lose a job, you lose this, you lose that, just say, you know what, that's a seed. Hmm. I'm getting a better car. I'm getting a better house. I'm getting a better job. I'm getting a better opportunity. I'm getting a better business. I'm getting better uh, um, uh, relationships. I'm getting uh, better uh, partners. I'm getting better business partners. Amen. Amen. Because whatever we lose for the gospel's sake, we will get back better. So be strong. Be strong. Be strong. Not just tough. Don't just be tough. Don't just take punches. Give the punches. Amen. Amen. We yes, strength Amen. requires toughness, but it's more than that. Being strong in the Lord, in his strength, his supernatural strength that overcomes everything. It's it, we have been baptized into that name that is above every other name. So that means his name is our name. So when you're when you're calling Jesus you are in that name. So when you say Jesus, you are part of that. You are part of him. He is part of you. We, we, we have become one spirit. So we need to rise up as an army, arm in arm, helping one another and take back territory. Take back, take control. When the enemy starts messing with your head, take control. You have control over your own thoughts. And that's where the battle is, is in your mind, in your thinking. You know, Apostle has been talking about a beautiful mind. Your mind is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's a wondrous thing because your mind can create. So, uh, there's, no, there's no limits. There's no limits to what your mind can create, to what your imagination can think up. It's only by our own conditioning that we put limits. Oh, well, that's impossible. Oh, well, that can't be done. Oh, well, that's never been done. That's, and we start, we start taking on all these limits that we have acquired from our environment and from people around us. And we, we you know, most times unconsciously, we take those things on and we start filtering things through those filters. We need to start filtering things through the word of God and not through anything else not through anybody else's opinions, not through what your parents have said, not through what your spouse says, not through what your, not even what, through what your pastor says, unless it lines up with the word of God. Amen. The Amen. filter is the Amen. word. Everything must be filtered through that. So today I just wanted to bring that quick word, just of encouragement that tough being tough means, means you survive. But being strong means you thrive. It means that it doesn't matter how hostile the environment is, you can still thrive. Isaac thrived. Isaac was prosperous in the midst of famine. He sowed in the midst of famine. He gave, he did, he did the impossible, the unthinkable. When there was nothing left in the land, Isaac sowed. He still sowed. And he was, uh, became prosperous because of that. If you are willing and obedient, you will eat the good of the land. It doesn't matter. You know, they've been screaming about, you know, shortages and all these different things, economic, blah, blah, blah. My God is my source and he will provide no matter what, because we are strong, we will thrive. We're not just going to survive. We're going to thrive. We're going to overcome and we should be the place that the world comes to when they need, when, when they have a need, the world should come to the church when they have a need, whether it's financial need, a uh, 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 physical need, whatever, you know, the church should be the ones that rise up and become the answer that the world is looking for. We can't back down. Never, 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 never back down. Never look back, never go back. Lot's wife looked back and she was frozen in time. That's what happens when you look back. We can never go back. We are moving forward 100% of the time, 
never stopping. If people come with you, they come with you. If people choose not to let them go because God has better replacements in store for you. So I hope this has been a blessing for you. I have no idea how long that was, <laughs> but that's, that's, that's what was in my spirit this morning is just, mm. you know, when the, when the going gets tough, it's not just the tough get going, but the strong must rise up and overtake the strong must rise up and overcome. We are more than conquerors. We have already conquered Satan. Now we just have to walk it. We have just have to walk in it, walk in that victory that we already have, but it comes by staying rooted in your source, staying connected, getting that nourishment. You know, that's why you have the the KEI Budapest, we have these meetings, we have the daily boost, we have the, the straight talk, we have all these different things, the power school, the school, school of the supernatural, and all these uh, uh, other things. What? Why? So that we can continue pouring out into you guys, and you guys can continue pouring out into those around you. And that's how we change this world. That's how we make an impact. But we must remain strong. God will renew your strength if you remain strong in him and in the power of his might. Don't rely on your own strength. Your own strength will fail. Your own intellect will fail. Your own plans will fail, but God never fails. Amen. Amen. So Amen. I hope that has been a blessing to you guys. That was a little quickie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you. Very encouraging. Very Thank you so much. <laughs> it's so good to see you guys good to see you the party is always here so you can always join us whenever you have the time <laughs> every tuesday is part tonight <laughs> yes amen yes, yes. <laughs> so Rekha, i'll turn it back thank over you. to you thank you so much for taking the time thank you so i know you are very busy and uh if if you need to leave that's fine but uh, thank you so, so much. And really, I, I was just thinking when you said that the tough, when the going gets tough, the losers give up. That's, that's my... Yes. <laughs> yes. That's how you can tell. Because you actually stopped in the first you know, part of the sentence. I said, yeah, this is how I would continue. The losers give up. And that's how you can distinguish the losers from the winners. Winners have mm -hmm. no quitting in their minds. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. Just as you said, we don't give up ever, 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 ever. I mean, it's not even in your thought. It should not mm -hmm. be in your thought because you were born for such a time as this. And That's also, right. if it was easy, anybody could do it. The right <laughs> the reason why you were born here because your you were your birth was time right in <laughs> this minute. It was time. Yes. And that's why, because the generations before you couldn't be doing it, generations after you're going to be busy with something else, but you are here to do this time and not just to survive, as Pastor Donna said, but also to thrive and to be the house of bread that people come to, whatever the bread means. It could be, you know, food, it could be healing, it could be spiritual nourishment, but yes, we are the house of bread in this world for always, mm -hmm. but especially in these days. So, yeah. Anybody has any anything to add? Question, comments, requests? I um I just want, want to say mom is so great to see you. Love you. <laughs> I didn't didn't know the program. So uh last night by myself I was meditating on the word and was just like Lord, I'm just realizing this life is all about patience. Mm -hmm. sometimes you have this vision you're like you know but when you are not moving but in my case I'm not saying because we have to move but if there's a blocking you prepare you just cannot give up it's all about mm -hmm. patience you will get there so I feel yeah. like our spirit just you know we're just one spirit the same um uh you know force same vision moving forward this is so mm -hmm. encouraging to hear you say the same yeah amen yes patience is very 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 important <laughs> you know we've been talking about that through faith and patience you receive the promise you know faith isn't the problem patience is the problem 
Yes. True. Faith, faith is never the problem. We have the faith, but it's the patience to see, to see the things come to pass, to see the things manifest with our, with our physical eyes. We see them with our spiritual eyes, but to see it with our physical eyes sometimes requires a little patience. Sometimes it takes, it, there's a little bit of a process. Sometimes it happens immediately. Sometimes it takes a little bit of time. What um, I don't understand is how is it possible that for some people it takes, it's like it's immediate. For others, they have to wait forever. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, I could give you a long list of, I just wonder. But that's the thing, you know, like Jesus gave the parable of the seed, you know, when it comes to the seed and the ground. And it's not saying, you know, that you're a bad person, but sometimes we have things in our lives that we haven't dealt with that actually delay and, and hold, hold, thing, hold us back and hold, uh, hold, hold our destiny hostage, insecurities, fears, uh, self-doubt, pain, unforgiveness, bitterness, you know, all these different things. A lot of times they, they become a hindrance. And a seed can only grow according to the ground that it's placed in. So the more fertile and the, the more perfect the ground is, the quicker the seed will germinate and the faster it will grow up. So, you know, that's a big thing is the quality of the soil or the heart, or, you know, are you watering your seed? Are you... Are you doing what you're supposed to do to see this thing through to completion or, or when there's, you know, when it doesn't happen immediately, do, does fear immediately spring up Yeah. or, or, or doubt or yeah. are wondering, oh, did I make a mistake? Or, you know, you have to be sure you have to, you have to know that, you know, that, you know. And like I said, there's no looking back. You can't, you can't second guess. A double-minded person is unstable and nothing, nothing flourishes in an unstable environment. There must be stability. So when I said perfect soil, meaning mature, it's mature, spiritually mature, you know, and it doesn't have, it's just, it's just at a moment when that seed meets that perfect environment, it springs up. So that's why it's important that we stay grounded on the word because the Bible doesn't say it. He, there's, there's no timeline and I'm holding my phone because that's my Bible right now. <laughs> but there's no, <laughs> exactly. where's the book? I need the book. But anyway, the, uh, but there's no, there's no timeline. It just says you lay hands on the sick. They shall recover. Didn't say when they shall recover, just says that they will recover. They may recover in five seconds. They may recover in five days. It, you, there's no, you know, so, but that is where your faith comes in. That's the trial of your faith. That's proving of your faith. Because if things always happen instantly, 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 there's no trial. Yeah. There's no, there's no proving because it doesn't take faith. <laughs> you don't need mm -hmm. faith if things are, you know. Like an ATM. You know, you know but that's ATM. why you, you need, let patients have her perfect work. Because there's an enemy out there who's going to try and delay always. So whenever, whenever um, it's like, a radar, you know, whenever he sees, oh, this one, the word is working over here. We need to go slow that one down, you know? And so they, 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 they're searching, you know, but then, but the enemy does learn who that, who he can attack and who he can't, <laughs> but that comes over time as you grow. And the more you put it into practice, like the Bible says, he says, <clears throat> Paul, I know, but who are you? <laughs> I know Paul, I can't get to Paul, but I can get to you because I don't know who you are. Why? Because they, they haven't, they haven't established themselves in the faith. You have to establish yourself. The Bible even says, having done all stand, having done all you've done all that's required. Now 
Now what? You stand in your faith. You stand firm, resolute, unshakable, and you keep moving forward, knowing that the words, what you have begun, it will be completed. Nothing that God starts, he does. There is nothing that God starts that he hasn't already completed. He finishes everything he starts. The problem is that we have our own timeline. But it's not, yeah. it's not according to what we think. It's according to the word of God. So different people, different soil, different rates of growth. But the word works no matter what. Amen. So, so Amen. I don't know if that answers question for you <laughs> but it's, for some people it's like they would ask something and they would get it immediately for others mm -hmm. it's like and if you look at their lives it's not that perfect at all mm -hmm. if it's by works in any by any means then it's not fair <laughs> saying it is. but it's not by works it's by faith i'm sure the few folks out there can relate you guys are all perfect but everybody else out there can relate that's why you don't we don't compare we don't compare ourselves yeah. with other yeah. people yeah. so um i want to say something i think it's also it's a practice to hear god and also the uh stand on his word right um mm -hmm. just for example um uh, actually before power school last year january I, you know, I'm, I'm into like crypto, in, you know, investment. So I, um, I, I had someone invest for me on the crypt, uh, Bitcoin. He lost all of my money and I was like crying and pray to God. And God gave me a number so specific, but I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't fully understand it. I just like, oh, Lord, that's awesome. It was like, uh, you know, the uh, 23,000. 600 you know blah 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 uh, it's it's an, the pricing for the bitcoin and i was like this whole time since january last year until now never went to that low and i just didn't get it i was like oh maybe that's my imagination but why is that so specific yesterday we get to that number mm. if i had understood what he meant i would have waited to now buy everything because right now it's a perfect time to buy everything Mm -hmm. so so again for me it's a practice it doesn't matter god, god i think he wants us to really rest him 100 percent like be sure about his word no doubts okay. no misunderstanding so you know I, I feel like also there's a timing as well right like whatever the promises or vision you see when god gave you a vision it might not be now it's like somewhere down the road you don't know when but just stand it's like Hey, Terry, it will surely come to pass. Yeah. You know, but, but they so cannot it doubt him. Yeah. 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 As I said, it can't be, you know, we, we're, we're the, we're fast food. We want everything our way right away. We want it yeah. now, everything now, everything now, everything now. But even, you know, Abraham had to wait how many years <laughs> before he had to wait 25 years after getting the promise. You know, I mean, it takes, you know, sometimes it takes some time, but it's in that time that you prove yourself, you prove, you, you show the world, you show the devil who you really are in that time. That's really, that's where the rubber meets the road is in that time in between the promise and the manifestation. That is the most important time because yeah. once it's manifested, it's done. Yeah. You know, yeah. you receive the promise. Now, this is where your faith is proven. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is where you prove it, what you really believe. Because the Bible says without faith, it's impossible to please God. It's not, it's not in necessarily, it's not necessarily in our accomplishments that we please him. We please him by believing him. Yeah. And in that, the result is our accomplishments. The result yeah. is the manifestation. When we prove that we really do believe his word, then the, the manifestation is just the result. That, that's just what's going to happen. That's the proving of your faith. 
Yeah. But we have to, we have to, that's why I said you have to stand strong. You have to be strong in him, in the power of his might that's at work in you. The according to the power that's at work in you. That's one of my favorite statements right there. According to the power that's at work in you. It's according, according to how much of this word is alive and breathing inside of you. It's not just being able to quote scriptures. It's not just, you know, saying, yes, yes, I agree. That's good. But how much of it is actually bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh? How much of it are you, do you breathe it? Do you eat it? Do you sleep it? Do you dream it? This word must become flesh. And that's the time that the word becomes flesh is from the promise to the manifestation. That word must take on flesh or must take on reality. It must take on reality in your spirit before it can take on reality in the physical. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. And what 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 uh, also so beautiful is in your short beautiful message prove me the words that you speak he will back you up it mm -hmm. it, it was crying in my spirit direct because you told about it's his time not uh, my time for what what i speak now it's his time so don't mess up your time in his time if i could understand mm -hmm. So that's yeah, very yeah. helpful. That's, that's um, I can something do with that information because sometimes I think what is hap hap happening, but I have to see his time in the plan, not my time, not my. Yeah, it's just yeah, agenda. exactly seeing the big picture. You want to see from God's perspective, not just from yours. So I have something to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, but um, uh, did, did you have something else? Oh, I'm sorry. I, th um, I was just trying to say like Abraham, even Abraham right, heard God's word, did not fully understand. And then he kind of uh, start, you know, like followed Sarah's lead. Then he had Ishmael, Ishmael, you know, Ishmael. So I think right. mm -hmm. that just tells you God wait well, until I that word become real. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. You cannot deviate. Just God is never changed. He, even though you tarry, but never late. And he yes. never deviate. He's promised, like you said, always comes true. Yes. Even it takes 20 years, just believe in it. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Yes, 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 I want to go back to that prove me and the time because uh, I know what the Lord will do in our beautiful nation. And sometimes uh, you see not working out it yet, but it will work out because mm -hmm. it's his plan, not my plan. It's not about yeah. me or Frida or Coach or uh, him, 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 me. It's about his time. So I yeah. will you just have to play you just have to do your part. Yes. Yes. You just have to do your part in his plan. And that's yes. all that's all we're supposed to do. Amen. Thank you so Amen. much. I Thank love you guys. I'm gonna I'm going to take off. So Thank but you, um it's nice coming Thank on you and seeing so you guys. Thank, Thank you so much. Love you so much. Love you all. <laughs> Behave, be good, love each other. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we'll do. <laughs> see you all soon. Okay. Definitely. See you okay, soon. Bye. Yes. Bye. See you soon. Love you. Love you. So, anybody else have anything to add? Or question, comment? Yeah, I wanted to comment something of. I noticed that uh, uh, she was getting ready to go, so I just uh, I held back just to let her go. But um, but 
when she said, um, stay connected, a tree by the water gets its nourishment and it thrives and so on. In that moment, I realized I dreamt that exact moment. You know, when you have deja vu, it's like you see uh -huh. something yeah. that it was in that exact moment. I had to look and I'm like, wait a minute. I've already seen this. I've already heard this in, in, a, in a dream. So that was so interesting. And, uh, and what so, was your dream exactly? I don't remember the whole thing. I just remember that part. It wow. just really alerted me. And I just, I, being, I being just connected realized. Being connected like a tree, is that what it is? Sorry? Being connected like a tree, is that what yes. it is? Yes. Yeah. She says, stay connected to the source, right? So a tree planted near the, the near the water will, will, will continue to draw and, and, and thrive. Yeah. So that was very interesting. And um, yeah, so I noticed like more and more God was about maybe a year and a half or even two years ago, God was starting to show me. He says, look, you've been doing a lot of things in your own strength. And so you need to stop doing that. <laughs> and so um, I was so thankful to hear that that's exactly what she was saying too, that it's God's strength in us. Right. And so we just we just really need to um, to rely on God's strength. And um, I have been doing that lots. I've been staying connected here and uh, I just love it here. Love this family. And um, last Sunday was one of the first times in quite some time that someone came to me and sat down and said, could I get some help from you? And I said, wow. sure. And we just talked and. He talked about people dying in his family, then a relationship, a close relationship where they cut that off and they uh, turned their backs on him. And then a him and a friend ended up getting COVID and he recovered well and his friend hadn't. And I said, you know what the common theme in all that is? It's death, physical death, death of relationships and an and, and attempt at a death of a, a, of a friend. And I read the first part of Romans 8, where it says that you have been delivered, uh, set free um, from death. And now we, we are uh, uh, connected to, to life. And we just spoke life over it. And um, I just interceded. Thank you, Frida, again for, la for last week. So we just sat down and we, we interceded. And um, I always, I always cl close my eyes whenever I do that. So when I looked at him, my goodness, you could just see the life wow. on him and in him. And it just flowed yeah. because I'm allowing, again, allowing God to just be free in me and his spirit giving me that strength. And so, You're so full. You're so yeah. full. You were able yeah. to give out finally. Just give out. And like it was a river. Easy. When you hold and it in, it's not right. a good thing, even in the natural. No. But when you give out, you yourself are being refreshed. So that's very important. That's right. Yeah. And... It was easy, as Apostle yes. said. It easy. was easy. So easy. it was wonderful. It was it was great because I absolutely love that. I love to help people, and yeah. um, I just it, it it it's funny though when when you turn around like what what Pastor Donna said when you turn around and you look at your past, you look at the problems, you think you freeze, you stop. And you don't move forward. And we shouldn't be doing that. We need to keep moving, keep our eyes forward, right? And uh, yeah, it was good. So it was it's wonderful. It's like you're in a survival mode, isn't yes, that? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we should be. That's what we should be advancing the most. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. And so often, you know, I heard a lady say one time, quite some time ago, it was actually an uh, intercession conference, but she said, when you are moving forward, so we're talking about militarily now, as Pastor Don had just finished saying. So we're moving forward. And um, as the, if, if we're far away from where we came from and far away uh, from where we're going, things just seem to just kind of go by and there's not a lot of resistance. It's just a whole lot of waiting, a whole lot of moving and so on. But the closer we get to our destination, suddenly there's gonna be resistance because where does the enemy uh, camp? 
exactly where we're going to stop us from succeeding. So the closer we get to success, the more resistance we often receive. That's mm -hmm. when we know we're almost there. That's right. That's right. We should be, we should be encouraged when suddenly things seem like they're going to go bad because we are at the, the moment of a breakthrough. Yeah. Don't it's a bit dark as before the dawn, isn't it? Right. Yeah. 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 That's, so. that's a good reminder. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yeah. I, I find that that's always a little um, difficult to understand when people say, like you, now I did it in my own strength. I mean, I give um, I, I give an example. I'm I'm doing this podcast now every week. It's, the fourth is coming today. I have to, to speak it in. It's ready, but I have I really have to use my. Um, of course, I, <laughs> I use my brain. I use my. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think about it. I study. I I, I pray about it. I uh, uh, ask the Holy Spirit to, to lead me. But I I have to do it. I mean, yeah. that is my own strength. <laughs> right. And I I I I don't understand what you what you say. I did it in my own strength. When do you know when it's in God's strength, and when do you know it's my own strength? Well, you I, you do you do your part. Yeah. And God does his part. But when you just mm -hmm. sit, don't expect things to get done. No. You understand? Yeah. So, that's so you have to, to you have to, to use your strength. You yes. also yeah, I mean you were given physical strength, even and intellectual and mental mm -hmm. strength. Yeah. That's, you know, that's yeah. a whole different well. You can use it, but you could be sitting mm -hmm. and doing nothing with all that, which many people do, in fact, many Christians uh -huh. in fact. But you are stepping out as God tells yeah. you, you're not. And Pastor Donna was, was saying it in um, um, during the School of the Spirit just recently uh, regarding how some Christians just spray, um, spray, they use the gun not with the, in, a, in a sniper right. mode, but it's like spraying, like, you know, mm -hmm. maybe I will hit something. Well, maybe they do, maybe they don't. But what we need is snipers. So I think it's the same way. Many people, many Christians are, you know, good intentionally they want to do something for the lord they want to do their own ministry but god but they need to wait for god to tell them what they do what they need to do not just because you know my neighbor is a missionary in africa i'm going to go and be a missionary in africa that doesn't that's not how it works what's your calling so when god finally reveals your calling and you finally hear your calling then you don't sit but you do your own strength you yeah. buy your airline ticket you do i mean you that's what it means you yeah. do your part but yes. you want to know that you are putting your energy and resources and time and efforts in the right direction. Yes, not right. just spray painting, not just spray shooting, because, you know, maybe I will hit something. Yes, because, because yeah. I, cannot, I cannot wait till something comes from heaven. And, but I have to type it in. I have to, to yeah. do the audio. I have to do the music. I have to, to, to speak it. So... It, uh, I have to eat it. I have to drink it. I have to sleep it, and then I can do it. So yeah, it's your body and your things and your things that God uses as a vessel. But if you, you, it's it's in your it's your it's in your power to decide whether you just want to sit and yeah. do nothing with all that, or you yeah. want to give up. Many many fat Christians are in churches. They sitting and they eating all the food, but they're yes. never giving it out. That's true. So that's, you know, I'm putting it in the, in contrast. Yeah, so you, okay, you, okay. On the other hand, and us, we have the mentality to go and do, but we do our part. When we know yeah. what, when we don't know what to do, then we ask. But when we receive the instructions, we don't just stay there because it's more comfortable. We actually do go out and we do mm -hmm. what we're supposed to do. So we are, we are putting our natural resources, our strength, energy, yeah. focus, yeah. You, your typing, I mean, all these things towards that goal that God wants. Yes, to I'm on a mission. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, because yeah. I, you know, I had, uh, I had uh, 66 hits the last three weeks and I have not 66 hits when mm -hmm. I stay in my room here and I invite oh, no. people. <laughs> yeah. Very good. good. 
Wow. I'm glad that you mentioned that that you write things down because that's the other thing that, that many Christians fail to do. Even while they're sitting in church and or or listening to any teachings, they don't write things down. That's yeah. wrong. Don't expect yeah. your brain to hold two, three, four hours of teachings. Yeah, that's that right. yeah. Oh, but, yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> I have, well, I have again, a you, books. <laughs> Exactly. But you see, again, again, you and, you know, many of us are actually we're trained to when we when we hear something that's important and we always expect to hear important things. That's why we carry our notebook at hand or, you know, any kind of devices that we use for taking notes and we are actively taking notes. Mm -hmm. but, but I see people left, right and center who don't. And they're sitting yeah. under the same teaching and they just don't do it. Oh, I will do it later. No, write it down while it's fresh. Yeah, that's yes. right. But you are doing it. So that's, again, another thing that you are aiming in the right direction. You're putting okay. your own resources and you're putting yes. your own energy into writing. Yes. The other thing is when, God, when people um, expect God to speak to them, I don't see them showing up in their notebook. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, do you expect God to speak to you while you're praying and while you're interceding or while you're worshiping? Because God sees whether or not you came prepared. Mm -hmm. So what yes. you want to do, you want to carry your whatever device you use. Again, there's no discrimination against paper and pen. I per personally like paper and pen. And uh, just, just make sure that even when you, you mentioned, Mark, you mentioned dreaming. I yeah. dream a lot too. And uh, I always write them down if I, if I feel that's from God. And you can tell whether it's not or, or not. Yeah. But uh, it, it's always a good thing to write down because God watches whether or not you are faithful on the thing that you have given you. And then he's going to give you more. But if you don't write down even the two, three sentences he spoke to you, he's not going to give you a whole sermon. Mm -hmm. So again, yeah. it's doing a very good thing, Frida, when you yeah. mentioned that you are writing things down. It's very important. The Bible talks about, I mean, look at all this, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Would we know all these things in the whole Bible, the 66 mm -hmm. books, if they haven't written it down? Yeah. You're joking? You know, are you waiting for people to, you know, traditionally say, you know, by word of mouth? That's going to be so diluted by the time it gets here to us. Yeah. It would not be the same story. I'm so happy and so grateful that people took the time and obeyed when God told them to write it down. Yeah. 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 Very important. That's also faithfulness and you putting yeah. your own resources and writing skills and pen and paper and efforts. You're putting it in the, in the right direction yes. as opposed to others who don't. And they're wondering why they are not getting anything. And you being faithful on what God gave you, you keep receiving more. Yeah, yeah. That, That's something yeah. that shows to God and to the whole spiritual world that, you know what, we need to give her more because she's faithful on the little she has so far received. Yeah. That's very mm -hmm. important. Yeah. 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 So I cannot take notes by pen and paper because then I can never I I would write the like two words. I couldn't, I don't know why. I feel like I'm I'm made for the digital age because when I type on the whenever Apostle talks on the daily boost or you know when we do Zoom meeting, I type very fast. I can take notes oh, yeah. very well that way. <laughs> But I don't know why I cannot write a um, note, notebook. I, um, mm -hmm. You know, I rem growing up writing so much by, you know, pencil. I don't know why. Um, like mom was talking about her Bible being the, um, the iPhone. I just bought my first Bible. Oh, wow. um, I never had a paper Bible. I always, my first Bible was online. It's always online. Oh. And the... Um, and I feel like digital Bible is better because I can search a word, it will come up. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and also I can, um, digital Bible has multiple versions I can compare. I can do a MS yeah. message, I can do K K uh, King James, I, I have you know, I can, <laughs> but this is only King, King James, so I have yeah. to get many more yeah. versions. Yeah, I'm just showing that, yeah, it's a good thing. And you know, it's interesting that you mentioned the digital things, you know, nothing against it. But uh, anything can happen when you don't have access yeah. to them, you know? Yeah. For instance, uh, last week, was it? Yeah, it's resort. Mm -hmm. So last week, sometime, I can't remember which day, I was somewhere else. But by the time I came, it was a very big, it wasn't a flood, but it was a very big rainstorm, very big mm -hmm. rainstorm. And uh, as I came home, the neighbors told me it's a huge house I'm living in. 
that the fuse box <laughs> was hit by a lightning. <laughs> oh, yeah. So there's no electricity in the whole house. Mm. So I'm just saying this never happened before. But that made me think, my goodness, I can't even cook my food because everything is electric. I mean, even the internet is electric. So it's like, I can't work. I can. So I started cleaning. But other than that, I would have started reading the Bible because uh, I mean, everything is connected to electricity. So I'm just saying it's good to have a notebook. It's good to have a, an actual hard copy yeah. Bible because you never know. <laughs> yeah. 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 You're right. Great. You're right. That was the first time ever happened, but it did get me thinking like, you know what? We are so dependent on the electricity. Yep. And maybe it's not That's a good right. <laughs> yeah so yeah here where i am in canada that's it's not uncommon to have a power outage for it for a time and so pretty much everybody knows that and uh, most of us have a barbecue that we can light most of us have a fire pit outside that we can use wow. if if things freeze and we we, we don't have the electricity. We just make a fire in the back and boil some water and everybody gathers around. We don't have any problems. It's yeah. so cold. It, the house is, we're not worried about um, uh, whether or not the food's going to spoil because we can put it outside. It'll freeze. Oh, we're more, put it in the we're, snow. We're put it more, in the ice, literally, outside in the ice. <laughs> we're, yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've, I've used my barbecue as a freezer before. Wow. But, um, but, uh, but it, the problem we have is, of course, if the cold comes in, then everything will freeze. Uh, and then how do we stay warm? So that's an wow. issue there. But yeah, so there's a lot of survival stuff that a lot of people know here. <laughs> that um, sounds like maybe a lot of people there haven't really thought of too much. No, we're so spoiled are. in the city. If you they're ever spoiled. need some lessons, no problem. <laughs> I mean, the electricity was restored like in an hour and a half. So, but it's like when they start working on it and the, and the, and they, the, the, uh, it's not just because of, you know, like shortage or whatever, but it was actually the whole fuse box of the house yep. was hit by a lightning yep. and there was fire and the fire, you know, the firefighters were here. It's like, what, what, what? Mm -hmm. So by the time I stepped in, it was all over, but I still smelled the smoke. It was like, yeah. what, what? And then people, and then I said, okay, there's no electricity in the whole house, no elevator, no nothing. I was like, what? And then they told me. And you didn't know when they start fixing. You don't know how long it's going to last. I said, well, okay. So, oh, the, no, no hot water either because that's yeah. also connected to it. So everything, <laughs> everything. So back to the point. Mm -hmm. Get a hard copy Bible. It's never a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, Tom Scarella mentioned too. He says um, there's something about writing in your Bible, and then as you're yeah. going through time later. You read that passage and you see what you wrote and you're reminded you can do that di digitally as well but there is something yeah. about when you uh, there is something about when you write it yeah also there's a connection between the neuro whatever you know neurons in your brain and mm. writing with the motor skills mm -hmm. so don't yeah. abandon that it's not a good direction that everything is like this not a good direction at all mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there's something about writing that is special yes. so uh, I studied a few languages, quite a few languages, and when I'm not sure, and, and I, I did it by hand, I don't even know why, but at the time, I guess that's why I did, and uh, I had the option to or not to use the digital, or, and I, I opted for the hand, and uh, I'm happy that I did, because when I don't know for sure how to spell something, I can write it down, like in the air, and I would know, because your, right. mem your, 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 your body has its own memory. Yeah. So I remember with my hand, even when it just, when I would have like a blackout, and like I, I don't know exactly, you know, how to spell, maybe with an E, maybe not with an E, but if I write it in the air, then I will know exactly. So, and this will not help you. Hmm. It will not bring back the, you know, but this will. So I would really, really encourage everybody to don't abandon the uh, uh, handwriting because that's something special. So, mm -hmm. but that's just my experience. Yeah. So now we covered everything <laughs> from power shortage to the <laughs> barbecue between the neurons in the brain and <laughs> how it connects the rest of the body. So Let's anybody see. else wants to say something? Maybe Gaius, you, you seem yeah. awfully quiet today. Gaius and he went. He left? He has to, uh, can you unmute yourself, um, Gaius? Maybe he left. That's fine. Yes. Yes. Oh, there you okay. are. Okay. So anything, anything you would like to add or questions or any comments? 
regarding what you heard the uh, the teaching? Um, it's just so beautiful. I mean, um, I think um, I I I have uh, been been following closely about us being strong and courageous, and I think it's just a continuation from. Um, uh, the teaching uh, a few a few days ago about being persistent. Um, so it's, it's it's such a beautiful message. Um, yeah. So to be strong and to push through, and um, it's just such an encouragement. Yeah. So I think for today, that's that's all I have to say. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, how many is here? How many Jensen? Amy? Yes, you are. Okay. Anything would you would like to add? I have heard the uh, first part. Um from the from uh, that uh, 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 wife from uh, Charles, and um, it, it's it's short that in uh, having a vision and seeing the vision, there's a time of be proved. That touched me. That uh, uh, confirmed me in uh, for former situations, and I thought, oh, thanks. That is. Um, uh, for me, is it uh, healing for my heart? Because wow. I also thought I was also doubting if I did it right. Mm. So, and I speak healing over your body, Hermin, because you 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 told me you're just po positively tested. So we speak healing over your body right now, and we break this mm -hmm. lie of the enemy. Uh, about your body and right. total healing right now in the, yep. so that you can sleep in the night and be fresh in the morning. Thank you. In Jesus name. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Oz, would you like to add something? Emmy? Oz, would you like to add something? Oz. Go. <laughs> I'm, I'm picking on the people who don't talk, so you're next. <laughs> no, I, 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 I noticed uh, through faith and patience, stand, and also between promise and manifestation. That's, that's the time we, we need our faith and our patience to see things come to pass. So I, I wrote it down. Also, the words of... Uh, Dr. Dolan and Defong, uh, stand strong in him, in the power of his might, and according to the power at work in me. I wrote down, in me. <laughs> so I made it personal. And I was really blessed by her message this evening. So I was glad to be here with you all. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you for sharing. Anna, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think for me, you all have mentioned all the points. Uh, this one which I really got it was says that the world must come to the church. And yeah, the world must come to the church. I think I missed the second part. And then what she said was like, never give up in any situation in life. Like, never, never give up. That's what I got. And um, be strong. Courageous, yeah, that's it. Praise God. Anyone else? Um, I wanted to just bring another point she mentioned, which I think it's so important about occupation. Um, you actually, what we're doing right now, we're invading the airwaves, um, mm -hmm. because the people, the material for people to listen to to form their opinions are so limited, right? So all mainstream yeah. media, people turn on the news, everything sounds the same. After decades, everybody, you know, people are not getting the nourishment um, because we let it. So I'm just so proud to be part of this um, um, 
this activity because it's the invasion. We, we, we have to do more, but you know, we're doing it so persistently. Uh, so thank you, uh, Princess Rekha, for leading this. Mm. And then, you know, because we don't care who is going to tune in, but we're invading the airwaves and we've seen people coming in that we don't even, we did not know. Um, because we, we make an impact and then when we speak, you know, because our power is in our speech. So we're taking over our power. We're not only just take it, we also, we punch it, we, we, <laughs> we invade. Um, that's what we do, we take action. It doesn't have to be like physical. It just, um, um, because even yesterday I was listening to, um, I, I don't want to say, which you're familiar, the Mel K show, right? Um, right now there's a, explosion of awake awakening in, a, in, in the United States right. in, a, in a political realm. Everybody's speaking of God. Everybody's like quoting, even people you would think, um, you know, not, has not you, would, you know, in the past we would say, oh, they're not Christians or they're not part of the church. No, but they're so much awakening. They're talking about people who were arrested uh, January 6th. Right. Um, uh, right now, actually, it's a real. It's real. It's not um, conspiracy. There's a lot of people are actually arrested now in in, in solitary confinement in DC. Right. Um, and uh, um, so, but the point is that the ladies, uh, she's talking about, we need to invade, in, affect how people see things, because right now, when she brings those information to people, people could not accept it. So most important things we change people's heart, people's mindset, change their point of view by the truth, now the true knowledge, true wisdom of God, then we can make an impact. It's, it's at the heart. It's at the heart. I think I think mom actually gave that message as well when the um, massacre happened in Texas. Again, it's not about gun control, it's not about setting up another law, you know, passing more laws. It's yeah, about yeah. change people's heart. That's right. Well, yeah. How do you do it? You got to speak out. Otherwise, they don't hear it. Then, they hear, then they, they, their attention is caught by something else, which is not truth. So, yeah, we're, what we're doing here is so important. And thank you for leading this. And thank, thank you for you. your persistence. Thank you for, for you guys are consistently and persistently coming on because it, it, we all make it. <laughs> Not just me, but we all, we all make it. We are all needed. But, um, yeah, it's very important to invade the, the, the space above us, which is, of course, the airwaves. And uh, we know that this is where the demonic is. The Bible talks about it. And of course, it's important to speak the truth because the truth blinds all the lies. And uh, even if no one hears it, it changes the atmosphere. When you release your yeah. voice, it changes the atmosphere. It breaks the atmosphere. So words are very important. Yeah. Whether you speak them in private, in your own prayer, prayer closet, or you speak them out on the streets, or you, you tell to someone. And uh, obviously, Frida, you talked about it last time that um, when we, how we are praying for each other and interceding for each other, we are proclaiming words. And our words, we, with our words, we can actually break the atmosphere yes. over that particular person we are mm -hmm. in the Lord. Mm -hmm. so that's, that's very important. It's a very good yes. point. Thank you for bringing it. Yeah, absolutely. It's good for us to know what to practice. Good. Anybody else? Well, this morning I was um, uh, I was um, seeking for the the word in um, in Hebrew about the secret place because I there was something in my podcast I had to be sure that I was telling the truth, uh -huh. and um, uh, I found out that that word um, in the secret place this that word secret is also used in Psalm 139 that uh, he saw uh, our, um, our beginning. Uh, um, let's see. Um, 39 first. Okay. 
Yes, here. Um, verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee, but I was made in secret. Wow. And I always thought that was that was the beginning in our mother's womb, but it is in secret, in a secret place. We were we were um our our substance was already with him. Yes. And I was meditating on that the whole day and I thought, wow, wow how wonderful because because now I understand. I always thought that was in a secret place in my mother's room, womb, but that is, that is, it is way better. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's good that we, that God sees our, saw our, my substance in my mother's room, but it's, it's even more, if, even better when I realized he saw me from the beginning. And and that made my day this morning. So I just wanted to share it with you. Wow. This is beautiful. Yes. Amen. Anybody else? We have a prayer request, right, Anna? Uh, yes, Mrs. Rick. Yes. So is the person going to come on the show or um, mm -hmm. we just... We just no, I'm sorry. I've sent it in my safe. I think she can't come because she sits outside the emergency. She just um oh of course. I'll send a message online. So yeah. Her name is Salfred um Peterson. Peterson. Okay, so we pray for Salfred Peterson right now. He okay. seemed to have some trouble with his back. In the name of Jesus, we break the power of the, that uh trouble in his back and he's he had yeah. to command complete healing to his back. And um, we command complete restoration for his full for his whole body, and we command peace. We send peace to the uh, to the wife that she would not be troubled, that she would have faith, and she would have complete calmness. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Do we have any other prayer requests? Um. So far, no. Just this. No. She said she can. Yeah. She said she can come just now, but he just prayed so. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Sorry, actually. Yeah. I, I still let you just pray it now. So she's watching online and release. She's, yeah. she's online and she saw she saw that we praying. We were praying, right? Yes. She said she can come. Maybe I'll just send her a response. Okay. She said amen. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good. So she did receive it. Wonderful. I wasn't sure how she's how she's connected, but that's good. Technology is wonderful when you when we know how to use it well. <laughs> mm -hmm. We always learn. So if, if there's no other prayer requests, comments, sharing, then we can close. But um, I was rather hoping that you guys have something else to share or add. Mm -hmm. yeah. I had something. Go ahead. But can, can I ask for prayers? But although I know I'm, I'm covered. Prayer. So, prayer. so yeah, kind of, maybe whatever you, you want to do, maybe not even here, I just want to bring it to attention. Okay. Um, so, you know, like where um, I'm trying to also provide information from outside, you know, the West, um, like um, yeah. I'm here, basically there has been a lot of earthquakes where um, in China, where my parents uh, currently live and pretty high, like six magnitude, it's pretty, it's, a, it's on the high, you know, like for earthquake is concerned um they're safe right um but i'm just i'm i guess um my point is what i'm trying to say is so i asked my mother is a mother what do you think because she was in the house the house starts to shake and mm -hmm. she couldn't make it out in time but luckily there wasn't you know it was not there was an injury and then the, you know everything's safe and then the second time she was awoken was in when she was asleep so i asked her so what do you think you know this must be really scary for you um she said you know what there's so much bad things are going on in the world that's why the earth is uh is is angry uh -huh. um but she says that because of her intuitive um i guess the spirit understand the, the things are going on because she, things are going on even though maybe they're not allowed to talk in certain extent 
but it's, it's the spirit knows, right? Um, so I think wait, we need to continue to intercede for the world, um, pray for the people around the world. Um, I think the shaking, it, it symbolizes things um, in the spirit. Um, so I guess I'm not asking for prayer for specifically for my parents, but ask for prayer for the world mm -hmm. or intercession. While you were speaking, the scripture came to me that the earth is groaning and waiting for the sons of God to manifest. So, yeah, we know there's a lot of things that are going on and, uh, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. we know yeah. that we are not ignorant of Satan's schemes. But all I'm saying is that the earth, is, I mean, your mother was absolutely right because the earth is responding to that waiting and that groaning because everybody, everything is under pressure, every, uh, uh, under oppression, everything, the earth, the animals, the plants, because it's all in the atmosphere and they are waiting for us to finally manifest and set them free. Yeah. In other words, take the lead mm -hmm. and set them free. Yeah. Yeah. So yes, the earth responds to that, that's for sure yeah. as well. So anybody wants to pray about that? Yeah. Lord, we thank you that you have a wonderful plan with the earth mm -hmm. and with our world. And we thank you that uh, in the groaning and in the, in the pains, there, are, there is expectation. There is expectation uh, um, so that, so that uh, the sons of, of God will be manifest. Mm -hmm. And um, we ourselves also are groaning, your word says. Lord, we're groaning that your picture, your uh, character, your life will be manifest in, in our lives so that we can, uh, can, can give this life to others. And in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. I pray that your church will be so um, awakened that uh, that this can happen to many more people, that there will be a love revolution in this world to, to save as many as, as, as possible. And, and thank you, Lord, that even in the groaning is the, is the giving birth of the new kingdom. kingdom. Thank you, Lord, mm -hmm. for the wonderful example of King Saul when, when, when everybody came to him to get wisdom and that I, I think that this is, mm -hmm. this is your um, mm -hmm. picture mm -hmm. of us in this time mm -hmm. in the in, of your your wonderful church in this time mm -hmm. and and Lord we pray that your your kingdom will be established through us in this world and through many others that that through this awakening, many, many, many mm -hmm. people will come to, mm -hmm. to acknowledging mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that your word is mm -hmm. really the truth mm -hmm. in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Amen. For the earnest expectation of the creature waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the great creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason mm -hmm. of him who has subjected the same in hope because the creature itself also mm -hmm. shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption yes. and the glorious liberty of the children of God. Yes. For we know that we whole mm -hmm. creation groans yes. and travail in pain together yes. until now. Mm -hmm. And not only they, but ourselves mm -hmm. also, which have the first fruits of the spirits. Yes. Mm -hmm. Even we ourselves groan with ourselves, waiting yeah. for the adoption to with the redemption of our body. Mm -hmm. For we are saved by hope. Yes, that's right. We are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope for what a man sees. Why, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with Patience, wait for it. Yes. Amen. Amen. And then likewise, the Spirit also helps our infirmities, for we know that we should pray, 
for as we ought, but the Spirit itself makes intercession for us, this groaning which cannot be uttered. Mm -hmm. And he, he that search the heart knows what is the mind of the Spirit, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Amen. Amen. That's powerful. Did, did one of the words say escape from corruption? Is this is this what the word said? <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So perfect. That's that's a very that was given for this time for sure. Probably other times as well, but I mean really <laughs> no, <laughs> no, everywhere you look, but not for long. No, no, no. Not for long indeed. Yeah. Praise God. So that's wonderful. Anybody else has something to add, share, request? Yes. As we were praying just then, I saw a, a vision of you, Princess Rika. So what I saw was Jesus' face and your face, and they both came together perfectly so that people could not tell the difference between you and mm -hmm. Jesus. And then I saw you spinning around, and as you did, uh, there was people who would look at you and uh, not you specifically, but what they saw through their own eyes was a, a distorted picture. And so they didn't see you the same, but the life and light of God in you shone mm -hmm. and the how they were seeing you um, began to clean up, began to clear up, began to, to move, and they were able to recognize the Jesus in you and the life and the light in you. And mm -hmm. so um, I just speak that out. I, I, I just mm -hmm. believe that there's a, there's going to be in my spirit. What I'm hearing is that um, very soon because of all that you've done and all that you're sowing and, 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 and so on, people are going to begin to instantly recognize the Jesus, the light and the life in you. And it's going to happen very quick, quickly, like maybe just even day to day. You won't even know. You'll just be out doing, um, m minding your own business. And suddenly somebody will just be like, whoa, and see something and be drawn to you. So that's wow. what I was seeing. Just mm -hmm. Powerful. Thank you so much. Very timely. Very timely. Thank you very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I take it. I receive it. Yes. Grab hold. Grab hold. Hold I receive it. <laughs> um, so recently, um, actually very frequently, um, God used to show me numbers a lot. Um, always the same number, but recently become very frequent, become hourly. Um, I'm seeing 37 all the time. I mean, how could this happen? You know, you, 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 you see, lift you your eyes. Thirty. You yeah. Like in what? Is it in vision or you see? Oh, that clock, it? clocks, clocks. Yeah. I mean, it's impossible. You can't. Just, you know, you look at the clock. It's nine thirty-seven, or ten thirty-seven, yeah. or okay. three thirty-seven. Yeah. It's, it's always thirty-seven. Yeah. So I started to look up the the verse to see in the Bible. Um, it's just I put together, but a lot. Yesterday, even yesterday, I literally went from um, um. Uh, First started it was twenty three thirty seven, and then it became uh, from like fourteen, like fourteen, thirteen, twelve, and ten, and eleven, ten, and then um, and seven, and five, and three. So I just looked them up. I put them together. It's so, it's so timely. It's almost like speaking about the time now. Yeah. God's word is always relevant. Um, Seven, what was it again? Seven? 37. 37. 37. Just any time I'm looking always, at the clock. Always two numbers, 37? Yeah, it's like either, you know, 337 or 537 or, you know, in the mid midnight. Because I was, hoping, I was hoping like if it's, you know, like in a different constellation, then maybe it's the seventh month and the third day. But that doesn't <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's not spiritual what I'm doing. I'm just trying on my own. You understand that. Oh I mean, obviously. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I just looked them up on the, um, you know, in the Bible. It's just like so relevant about, um, you know, the current corruption. But mm -hmm. God is coming. 
he basically said, watch. I'm telling yeah. everyone, watch. You know, don't, when I come back, don't make, don't let me find you asleep. Yes. And then, watch out. Watch out. yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no one can say something happened before the Lord says it happens. Yeah, and he will not tarry anymore. That's that's wonderful. Um, okay. Again, it came up, so I I want to make sure that I, I I put it out there. Does anybody have that have it on their hearts to teach on the different kinds of prayers next time? Like prayers, supplication, you know, just the different kinds of prayers. I have the whole list in my notes. Okay, then you're on. Next week you're on. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yay. okay. <laughs> last time you only taught yes. on uh, the exclusive session or mainly. Yes. But now you can, I mean, list all this. Because I think people need to have a clarity about yes. what is. Mm -hmm. For instance, when it says, you know, we don't pray for the sick. But then, you know, I think in James or one of these places, I should I should have looked it up, mm -hmm. but I, it just came to me, so I didn't I didn't get prepared in terms of that particular scripture. But it says, uh, the prayer of faith, um, um, keeps the sick. Yes. Uh, I, if somebody has the verse, they can just read that. But that's basically what it is: a prayer of faith. <laughs> What, what, can you say in James 5? James 5, yeah. James something, yeah. Well, I, I would love to because there's so much um, there's so much different prayers. Yes, and, uh, exactly. and uh, there's so so many different ways of for instance, uh, in that particular uh, because I want to make a point with that, just and, and just bring okay. that example James, how people don't understand. Yeah. The different kinds of prayers, and they think, well, praying means this, but actually, there are different kinds of prayers, and um, depending on what you aim for, it is uh, and the prayer of faith shall uh, save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up, and if he has committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. Yeah, so the prayer of faith will save the sick. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So, and, and then, how do you how do you reconcile it with the with what we know to be true and with you practice that we don't pray for the sick? No. That's what I'm saying. So, how do you reconcile it? So, I'm putting it. Up, we know the answer, but I'm Wait. putting it out there for the folks. Uh, there is no contradiction. You need to understand that there is no contradiction no. because the prayer of faith is a command. You see how it works. Yes. Right. right. Yes. You know, we don't pray for the sick, but James says the prayer yes. of faith. Shall, and no, 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 no. Yes, you, don't, because you don't understand yes. what the prayer of faith is. A prayer of faith is a command. Is loose. Get up. Amen. Amen. So that's what I'm saying. That's why I want people to understand the different kinds of prayers, Amen. depending on the the goal that we want, depending on the situation. So take it away, and you know, just I know you already have your notes, but make it as practical. Yes. Yeah, okay. Because I think it's, it's extremely important that people understand what the prayer is not a generic something, but it's always no, no, no. a kind of thing, depending on what, what they achieve. Yeah, it is here connected with uh, Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah, Elijah. Uh, who, who was, who was uh, praying this rain in. And he yeah. knew the rain was uh, uh, was coming. So he... he, he he asked his uh, his uh, servant to go and watch, and but he was he was in the meantime travailing for this for this rain that was coming because he knew the rain was coming. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So so I so I have a little t testimony here in the Netherlands. We had the last uh, few months not a lot of rain, so they were concerned about the water level in the earth. So I speak rain. Well, it doesn't surprise you. It has rained a lot. So <laughs> the, the level of water is very good now. I don't say that to people around <laughs> me in the Netherlands, but I know what I <laughs> spoke. That's three. Amen. Three, for three. Yeah. So, so keep it secret. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, okay. You may not understand. So, so. It's, 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 it's many times I, I, I have spoke about whether, 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 whether a sun or rain or, or anyone I want that is yeah. necessary for the farmers or for 
for me some, yeah. sometimes. Yes. And, no, and notice how that is also connected to the atmosphere because the rain is coming from the atmosphere. Everything is coming, you know, the air, the, the clouds, the sun, the, the wind, everything is connected in the atmosphere. So, yeah. of course, we rule and reign in the atmosphere where the spiritual mm -hmm. principalities are. There are not good ones. <laughs> no, and, 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 and even Joseph in the Old Covenant had a dream that the stars and the moon were bow for him, bow for him. And this Old Testament, this is Old Covenant. Well, we are now, now the New Covenant. What's about us and the stars and the moon and the sun? We have to reign. So, yeah. Beautiful. Maybe you guys should teach together. Yeah. You take one part, Frida takes another part. Yes. Yes, yes, we do. You guys are working together so well. <laughs> and we'll be fired next week next week oh so, wonderful. i'm oh. so happy it was just on my heart and it's like time and again and i keep forgetting to bring it up and i i think it's good to obey it's, it must it's, it's a must to obey because god has its purpose why you know why he brings that up but i think it's also uh, it's nice to go through it also for ourselves and just you know for our remembrance but also for people out there, because I think many people have a very, very different, mis I mean, just a misconception, depending on what religious background or what non-religious mm -hmm. background they're coming from. Mm -hmm. To them, prayer is prayer. They have no idea that there are different kinds of, but I, I remember that uh, that uh, scripture, it says that, you know, with all, with all kinds of prayers. So that means there's more than one. Yes. You yeah. know? All right. kinds of prayers and supplications. So... <clears throat> There's one for each time. <laughs> yes. Exactly. So I go for it. <laughs> Good. I'm so excited. And anybody else who wants to teach at some point, let me know if you have a, something in your heart. I don't want to, I, I do want to give you opportunity to uh, express yourself. And I believe that we are all making this group. Um, not just I, but, you know, we are with all you. So use the opportunity. Maybe you don't get too many other places. <laughs> other people, <laughs> like, like the like the pastor take the microphone and preach all the time because they like. To <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, what it is. that's how we grew up. Yeah. So it's right. not like, um, cool. Here's the microphone. Please teach. I don't hear it too often in churches. So yeah. But yeah. here you have the opportunity. So Ning, you want to say something? Uh, yes, I just. Put all the uh, verses in uh, in the chat um, because I think it's important to share because God is speaking through that and like you you just mentioned never take what He speaks to you for granted you, you always take it uh, you know because it's a precious so if you feel inclined or you feel being led just uh, read through them because for me it was speaking a lot to me. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he didn't just want to speak to me. He wanted to speak to the world through, you know, through me, children, everybody hear different things together. We have the full message. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. So are we ready to close? Uh, Essie is here. She just came. Oh, hi, Essie. Thank you for joining us. Better late yes. than never. What can we do for you today? I, I don't have much to contribute today, but I've, I've been really blessed. Great yes. Time. I was like, I missed it, but I got on anyway. You can always <laughs> review it. It's recorded, so you can always review it on the... Uh, I will, oh. Are you a part of the group? Are you, the part of, are you a part of our group? or? Yes, I think so. No. Yes, I am. Yeah. Better make sure that you are because I always post the uh, uh where you can find this uh uh this edition or the next one or whatever uh on YouTube. On YouTube, okay. Yeah, I always put the link here in the in the group so you can go immediately there and, and find the find this for instance or the last one. So you always have it right. Here. Okay. Help you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, maybe we can we can do the the advertisement mm -hmm. and yes. Uh, so far, no prayer requests online. Nothing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so coming up, 
Wait a second. Yeah, so coming up on this month, on the 25th, it's the Hangout with Holy Spirit. It's done by the Praise and Worship team. From the 20, yes, it's on the 25th at 6.30 p.m. So if you're somewhere around Rhode Island, please go to the Embassy, 24 Street, Johnston, Rhode Island. And on 30th of this month, to the 3rd of July, good news of the Charles and the will be in Hamburg, Germany. So if you're anywhere around Europe, please uh, do go online, go to, sorry, go to events.eu and do uh, register for this. It is a paid, paid event. On 30th, you have the Kingdom Business. And the next two days is the school is of supernatural. Please do not miss it. Um, you have to just attend it, right? On the 18th to 24th of um, next month, we had a Power School of Miracles, and the secret is the team is secret place, hosted by Pastor Major James and Pastor David O'Brien. And we have the Charles and the and Pastor Donald will be speaking on this event. It's a whole a one week of marination, so do make your way to. Um, the US next month. If, if you can't attend it, you can always join us online. Go to psom.org. Thank you so much for so into this ministry. Uh, we don't take it for granted. We do have several options where you can sow. One is Christlove.org and just click on the donate button. If you have PayPal, paypal.me slash Charles and Deport, Cash App, Dr. Charles and Deport, then more at Dr. Charles and Deport as well. Zell Chrysler 401 9994466. Using the Western Union, just chart and the phone. Please send us the code as well. And you have check a mail order, Chrysler Media, your box 7 to 800, Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. Right. Back to you, Princess Leica. Thank you so much. We can do our beautiful outro music, and I know you do it best, <laughs> so I just leave it to you. Okay, so the ending. Uh huh. No sound. Changing your life and changing the world and see you next Tuesday. Don't miss it. Frida and Alexander is going to teach on the different kinds of prayers and we need to know because we must use bullets. Bullets, not spray paint, but bullets, bullets, bullets. So sniper style. Sniper style. You know, actually, you know, the, the, the two... The two are connected. So thank you so much. Love you all. And see you next Tuesday. Have a wonderful week. God bless you. Bye-bye.